Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Tourist Trophy. Today is episode number 18. If you guys do want to stay up to date with the rest of the Tourist Trophy series, then make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And make sure to check out the links in the description for our socials. We've got Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. But hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. Right, so today what we're going to be doing, we are doing the Street Machine Cup again. We're doing stages 3 and 4. Uh, which respectively is up to a thousand CC and unlimited. So uh, we need to get ourselves for the first one. We need to get a 1000 CC bike or up to 1000 CC. Um, okay, we're at the thousands here. So we've got loads of bikes like 999. Oh, we have the Ducati. Obviously, we can't take any of the ones that are R because these are racing modifiers. And we just want the ends, which are the street bikes. So, this is the highest. The Suzuki GSX R1000, which is similar to the last one, I think. Which is bright yellow, which is a very, very nice color. Um, or we could take the Ducati or the Kawasaki. Or a Ninja. I think the best bikes, though, that we've ever driven so far are the Suzukis. But I really want to mix it up. Because there's no point driving the same bike over and over again. But then again, the Suzuki is like bright yellow. It's a nice color. I feel like I have to take the yellow. The yellow has cried out saying take me. And I've fallen for its tricks. We're taking a yellow bike. But the next bike won't be a Suzuki. So uh, let's start with stage 3 which is up to 1000 cc or cubic centimeters i think it's cubic centimeters so yeah first off is trial mountain then we'll be going to midfield raceway and then autumn ring so let's do this trial mountain here we come right we are here at trial mountain with the suzuki gsx r1000 it's the fastest bike we've driven yet in the races Let's see how quick is it actually. Fairly quick. It's surprising to think that in first gear this bike gets to 100 miles an hour. Yeah. The other bikes we drove earlier couldn't get to 100 without being in sixth. Pretty crazy. Oh, that brake brought the rear end of the bike out so quick then. Definitely is not how bikes turn. Awesome. Let's get around here and then we're on to the long straight. There will be a jump towards the end of the straight. That's how Trial Mountain is. Always has been. Might change for GT7 though because they're planning on having the FIA design the track. Oh. Yeah, that was uh, not ideal. Not ideal one bit. Apparently, bikes don't like the uh, straight section of Trial Mountain that much. So, uh, we're going to have to watch out for that for the future. Awesome. On our way to the finish line. Let's go. Ta-da. That was a good overtake there. All right, let's try going in this way, round this way. Nearly falling off the bike there. And that is one lap done. And that is the kind of lap you would expect a massively upgraded VW Golf with Gran Turismo 4 to get. Like, you would have to, like, put on the Stage 4 turbocharger that gets it, like, 800 brake horsepower for you to get that. And we've done that in a super bike. A very powerful one. But still a super bike. That's impressive. But bikes will never be quicker than the fastest cars out there. Especially F1 cars. You'll never get a bike racing quicker around a track than an F1 car. Because you just can't. You can't get two wheels to grip round a corner at 180 miles an hour around say Spain for example 
the circuit to Catalonia. Not a chance is a speed bike, a super bike, going to get around that corner. That third corner. Not a chance. Nuh uh. Ooh, a lot of slow down for that corner there. Awesome. Whoa, careful. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 oh. Obviously, after this, th these are the only events that you can get, um, that you can use street bikes on, which seems odd because of the fact that we've done so many events to get street bikes and not actually... It, in the challenge mode, you don't get many racing bikes. You get more street bikes than racing bikes. So you get about, I would say, about 30 racing bikes and 60 street bikes. Which then doesn't make sense and doesn't add up. Because of the fact that you have only 12 races that you can use street bikes in. And you have more events... Then actual races in racing bikes is weird. Because you then have 18 events, which each one has at least three races, just of racing bikes. Seems a bit odd, out of place, not normal. But maybe, if Polyphony could actually listen to people, because a lot of people want to see a Taurus Trophy 2. And to be honest, I would love to see a Taurus Trophy 2. And they could do it. And I would buy it straight up. If they did it, maybe a year and a half, two years after Gran Turismo 7, they made Taurus Trophy 2. It would sell. And because the FIA are making the tracks easier, because they're not as extreme as before, yeah, we could have a very interesting bike game out of Gran Turismo 7, but uh, Polyphony won't do it. But there we go, there's the win. Nice. Five minutes that took. Boom, boom, boom. Do we get a bike for this one as well? Hopefully we do. And we're going to get biker gear. Let's have a look and see what we got. We got ourselves two helmets. Very nice. And then we also got a bike as well. The MV Augusta. Okay, so there are more bikes of these other brands. But they're all sort of like unlocked in the races. Not the challenge mode. Which I think is fair enough. Uh, but next up is Midfield Raceway. Now, I hate this track for bikes. Um, obviously, the start's good. But it's that final section you can see at the very far left, which is a nightmare. Let's do it. Right, here at Midfield Raceway, you see that panoramic shot. The panning from side to side. Looks absolutely amazing, that bridge. But here we go. I think this is going to be one of the longest straights we drive down. I actually saw, um, what was it, a video a couple of weeks, or was it last night? It was a couple of, either a couple of days ago or last night. I don't know why I was saying weeks. A couple of days ago. A around here, a GT4, with like a 50 second lap time. And it was in like a Nissan race car. I think the channel was like Pro Drive or something. Absolutely amazing though, just like... An insane lap time in Gran Turismo 4. Or it might be Gran Turismo 3. I think it was Gran Turismo 3, actually. But absolutely insane lap times.
Okay, this is the dodgy section. Slow me down there and then slow me down here. Get around the corner. Perfect. Right, careful of there because you don't want to fall off the bike, preferably. We're getting a lot of speed now, nearly 180 miles an hour. We're going to brake a bit early just to make sure we get around the corner. But 180 miles an hour on that main straight is absolutely insane. Look at that. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down. Perfect. We get around that corner very nicely with the tap of the rear brakes. The thing I like about this as well is you can control both the front and the rear brakes. Which is a very good feature. The fact that I can go on the rear brakes here. Very nice. Oh, yeah, that's my worry about that corner. Is the fact that it is very easy to fall off if you're not going around it right. And uh, because of that, we've lost the chance of a best lap for this lap or the next lap. So uh, our first lap was our fastest lap. Very good there. 8.4 seconds ahead. That's a decent safety zone there. I'm hoping that later on it does get a little bit more challenging. But not too challenging that I want to rip my hair out. Nice. Oh. Perfect. I think it was a very necessary thing to add wheelies into this game. Because if you couldn't do a wheelie. Imagine how annoyed people would be in a bike game if you couldn't do this. I mean, I would be annoyed if I couldn't do that. Very nice. Oh, a little bit of a wobble. Got a very rubbish exit out of that corner there. Let's see how long we can wheelie for. Nope, lost it. We did get the fastest lap on the last lap, which I wasn't expecting, but that was a decent race. GG. Let's go and get our rewards and see what bike we got, if we do get a bike. And here we go, the Honda CBR 954 Fireblade. It's a very weird number. Oh, look at that though. That looks very nice. I like the look of that. Right, next up is the Autumn Ring. This is a very short track, so uh, this will probably only take us about no more than four minutes. All right, here we go at the Autumn Ring in our Suzuki. I didn't actually uh, check what bike we were going against, so um, we're going against that bike. We'll call it that bike. Uh, this track, not going to lie, is horrendous for fast bikes because of that section there. Come on, slow down for the corner. Get around very nicely there. This actually might take five minutes for this race, to be perfectly honest. Awesome. Oh, 
I am rubbish at that corner. Yeah, caught up big time. Massive corner cut. Absolutely insane here. Oh, nearly lost control there. Oh, perfect braking zone there. Managing to stop the bike just at the right opportunity. Wait, does the distance count a reset for every single race? Is it not like a permanent thing that gets counted? Because if not, that is such a shame. Do you know, one thing I really would like to see um, in Gran Turismo 7, because obviously multiplayer is a massive thing now in games, I would love to see the used car dealership be a thing as single player can be played normally so that when the servers get shut down in the future or for people who just play single player, it functions exactly the same as the old used car dealerships but you also have the option while the servers are active to buy used cars off of other people so other people can sell their cars the auction house takes a 10% commission for example like realistic like it realistically would be and or whatever commission and you buy someone else's car with the exact same design that's on it so you could even sell designs for example with the exact same design, the exact same condition exact same everything mileage, all sorts I think that would be a good move for them to do Because they could totally do it. But it wouldn't be like um, Forza's auction house either. I don't think that would work. And it would be too much copying. I think it should just be you sell a car. Use. The game will work out a price for it. Like it does for any used car sort of built in the game works out a price and you have to sell it for that price if you want to sell it and then if someone buys it you get the money if no one buys it within say 48 hours it's gone or not gone but you keep it and you just re put it up for sale something like that would be absolutely amazing And that's been Gran Turismo 7 features I want to see. <laughs> but there we go. That is stage 3 completed. It was very good. I love the yellow colour of this bike as well. Wow, it is insane. Really nice colour. Gran Turismo 7 has got a lot to build up for. Because it obviously... By the looks of it, they're trying to go back to Gran Turismo 4 routes. So they have a lot of hype to live up for. But here we go. Honda CB750F. Very nice. And next up is going to be the Unlimited Bikes. Um, so, obviously Stage 4. Let's take a look. Uh, saving. There we go. Very nice. I'm so glad autosave is actually a thing on the PS2 for some games. Uh, right, let's organize in displacement and we're going to go maximum here. We've got this one, the Yamaha MT with 1600. Yeah. Mm, I feel like that's also very heavy. So, I'm trying to look for a street bike that is... Not a heavy looking bike, 
but that is still quite powerful. Something like that. But that still looks very heavy. Uh, I sort of know what I'm looking for, but not at the same time. Oh, we do have the Buell Firebolt. This bike. I remember riding that, and that was quite a nice one. I might pick that one. Bright orange. We'll see how this goes, hopefully. If you see me on the next clip complaining about the bike and saying that I swapped it, then uh, it obviously didn't go well. But uh, here we go. Stage 4, unlimited. We're starting off with Apricot Hill Raceway, moving on to High Speed Ring, and then the Sakuba Circuit. Let's go to Apricot Hill Raceway. Right, so we're here with the Buell Firebolt. Honda against the Honda bike. Okay, this thing is... Oh, yeah, I forgot how deep this bike sounds. It does seem fairly quick, so hopefully we can get a fairly decent run. Obviously, the Apricot Hill Raceway is one of my favourite original tracks in... Whoa! That didn't go well. Uh, yeah. Apricot Hill Raceway is one of my favourite original tracks in Gran Turismo. Um, always has been. Just, I love the sort of flowing section at the start. And then this corner here is insane. And then coming up to the main, like, one of the longest straights. Into an immediate hairpin. It's just such a challenge. To try and get your breaking point just right. There we go, that was good. One thing I would love to see is all of the original tracks to come back. The originals come back. Everything. Th this is like my Gran Turismo 7 prediction video. This could technically class as one of those. I know I've mentioned it a lot in like Gran Turismo 5, Gran Turismo 6, as soon as GT7 was announced. But those are the things I want to see, is all the tracks come back. Everything. Because at the end of the day, if it takes up a quarter of the storage space on my PS5, I'm not fussed. As long as it's a good game, it can take up as much storage as it wants. If I'm going to enjoy it and play it all the time, I'll waste an extra 50 gigabytes just to have extra tracks. In case I want to play them. And to be honest, I would play them all. Awesome. This bike feels slower than the last one though, surprisingly. But uh, it's definitely a good change of pace. You can tell it's... <laughs> you can sort of tell it's an American bike. Because American vehicles always have a much lower, deeper sound to their engines. You think the Ford Mustang. Shelby's. You've got... What is it? Corvette's. Camaros, all of them. Deep, muscly cars. Even the Hennessy Venom, a car that is supposed to be a hypercar to beat the Bugatti Veyron, sounds like a muscle car. Made out of a British car body. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's a good corner there. Awesome. The fact that every single track that is on tarmac, obviously, because there isn't such thing as 
ninja biking in this game. Oh, that would be a good thing. If they made a second Taurus trophy to add, like, motocross, that'd be pretty sick. And quad bikes. Quad bikes would be pretty cool. They could totally do that. But the amount of... The amount of ideas I'm throwing at Polyphony here. I could work for them. I mean, I'm not Japanese, so um, I think there would definitely be a language barrier between... Ah, who cares? Oh! That was rubbish. Through that uh, chicane there. We have got a bike, an angry bike trying to catch up with us. But I think we're holding them back just enough. There we go. Very nice. Across the finish line. Not quite as good as I wanted it to be, but... You can't get everything every time. Five minutes for that. And here we go. We got some biker gear. Let's have a look and see what we got. One helmet. Fair enough. We got the MV Augusta as well. I think that's a 1000cc bike. Ooh. I like those star-shaped rims. They look very nice. Very, very nice rims there. Next up is the high-speed ring. Let's go. Right, so we're going up against a Yamaha MT-01 from 2005. Let's do this. Round the high-speed ring. I have a feeling this bike's going to struggle with this first corner. Yeah, struggles a little bit, but definitely much quicker than the Yamaha. So, could also say that. And we're off. Onto the brakes for the first corner of the S Benz. Onto the rear brakes this time, keeping it maintained. Managed to maintain the speed very well through there. Again, I don't like how that trip meter resets after every race. That should save. I would like to have had that save, but... Hmm. Oh, well. This game is sort of past the uh, bug fixing stage, I would say. Whatever opportunity it had for bug fixes, I think that's gone now. Only five gears. Interesting. Ah, oh, that was perfect. That corner could not have gone better if we tried. go stick it to this side going around high speed ring is a lot of fun actually awesome perfect look at that Oh, we're going to have to slow down big time here. Nice. Awesome. We're hitting maximum. We're hitting like a V-max there. Come on. Can we do that corner again? Oh, we had a bit of contact. But I think it felt faster than last time. Absolutely messed up that corner there, though. Ruined that. Ruined our opportunities there. Oh, 
Awesome. Round the corner. Round the next one. All right up against the curb there. Here we go, final section of the lap. Hopefully we are much faster. Are we going to get a best lap? Probably not. We did. Only just, but we got a faster lap. That is awesome. Just under four minutes for that race. That was very good. 100 brake horsepower that bike has. So that has a lot less horsepower than the last one, and it's got more displacement. That makes no sense in my head. In my small brain, that makes no sense whatsoever. But in a biker's brain, that does. But there we go, the Yamaha RZ250 from 1980. Look at that. We've got one more race left to go. And then that is probably me done for today. What is next? The Sakuba Circuit. Good one to finish off with. Let's go. Right, here we go. Sakuba, the last race of the day. Here we go. We're going to be taking this Buell bike. I'm actually really interested to see how this goes because this bike is very slow around corners compared to the other bikes. Um, so, yeah. Hairpin corners probably aren't its strong point. And in fact, it's not very good at accelerating either, so getting out of the corners c could be a problem. By the looks of it though, we're not having too much of a problem catching up. The sound definitely throws you off. It makes you think the bike is going much slower than it is. That's why like muscle cars always seem slower than what they are. Because you're like, oh, it sounds like it's not revving up high enough and then you realize you're actually going 200 miles an hour in a corvette it's a very weird experience all right let's see are we going for the outside overtake and we are pushing us off the track toxicity on an all new high there oh look at that look at that pass Insane pass there. Watermelon sugar. Hi. Woo! Yes. Very nice. Look at that. That was an insane corner. This is very good. This is very good. Lap number three. The final lap. We probably won't end up riding this bike again because I don't think you can actually take this into uh, racing modified events, which is a little bit of a shame that you can't take street bikes, but oh well. Go, go, go. Nice. Come on, come on, come on. That is really good. Are we... We can't actually get a wheelie. There is no way I can do a wheelie on this bike. It's just not powerful enough. 
But we are going to finish on a good high here. Here we go. Across the line. Lovely. Brilliant. 3 minutes 26 that took for that. For the bike to finish. That was a decent time. GG. Let's have a look at this. See what rewards we get. Hopefully we get something decent. Hopefully. No, in my luck, we'll get something crap. Oh! Mario... What? That is a new... Company. We have not seen that bike before. Or this brand. That is awesome. There are brands that we haven't seen yet. Interesting. We have some more surprises coming. But uh, let's quickly go take a look at our riding gear. We're going to swap out. See what new stuff we just got. Because we have gotten quite a few uh, bits of riding gear. Helmets specifically. Uh, can I select? Yes. Oh, I do like that. Have we got, like, green gloves yet? No. We can definitely put this on. Uh, cancel for now. Have we got green boots? Yes, we do. Here. I don't want something that doesn't match. Let's go for that. That looks alright. I'll take that. And there we go. We have ourselves some new riding gear. And all the pictures have updated. Nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel, then make sure to hit that join button or hit that merch link in the description. And don't forget to check out the description for our social links. We have Instagram, Discord and Twitter. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Like a Christmas.